Greetings everyone and welcome once more to Galactic Civilizations for Supernova to another sponsored series by Stardock Entertainment. Since my last time with this game it has received numerous new updates and even a new DLC called Tales of the Centauron. These updates not only revamp existing systems like the UI but also add new features such as the new lore driven gameplay where you can experience a storyline for each civilization with its own unique rewards. Also a new campaign mission, new biomes for planets and new weapon systems add dozens of reasons to try it out again. If you're interested in Galactic Civilizations for Supernova don't forget to check out the link in the video description and leave a like. Now we're going to start with a new game right away and this time we're playing as the Yor Singularity, an ancient race of sentient artificial beings. The Yor have no need for crude biological methods for reproduction and consumption and can inhabit worlds other races would find tolerable. You can actually choose a lot of civilizations here, um, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. Last time we played the Terran resistance, right? So humans. And now we're playing as robots. The cool thing about them is, well, they don't need food to grow, but we can manufacture them as well. And with that, let's go ahead and play as the Yor in a new playthrough of Galactic Civilizations for Supernova. Go, 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 go. The Yor are artificial beings, originally servants of an ancient species known as the Iconians. Granted sentience by the Dreadlords, the Yor turned against their Iconian creators, apparently wiping them from the face of the galaxy. And here we are, finally. Hello everyone and welcome. Now, in the game itself, we are getting a little introduction to our species that we're playing here, the machine forms, and the Yor are highly productive and capable of building large fleets of self-repairing vessels. Um, yeah, we're looking perhaps a bit hostile. Don't get, don't get fooled by that. We are funny people. We are a jolly good folk. Now, in here we are Iconia. That's our capital planet right now. It's looking... A bit desert, but at least sunny and perhaps also warm. I have no idea. Um, that would be something. And we are getting into the um, the planet itself right away because, yeah, we have a couple of things to do before we actually get the game rolling. And one of these things is that we need to found a capital city. Um, and this one here will then finally get the whole economy cracking. Right now we got five mm, robots, five yours um, that we have um, working here. They all have a different name. That's pretty cool, right? And they all have a different specialization. So we got two manufacturers, we got two citizens, and we got one scientist here right now. Um, with the capital city that we built, we actually get another huge bump to the population cap. Right now we are at three and we are having five robots here, five ro yours. And in this case, Case here we cannot change population right now so we need to start with the growing um the capital is actually then also given a adjacency bonus of plus two to every um other um tile that is surrounding it so we should have it where we do actually have a lot of tiles around it so for example here right in this case here we can have then a lot of manufacturing around that for example manufacturing districts um that i would like to start with as well right away now what we can see is that some of these tiles have specialities. So there's a Xantium uh, tile over here with a special resource that would give me a boost to military and manufacturing output. And we also got um, some of these tiles that give me a boost to research. So we should also clear them as quickly as possible. Ancient Wonder, for example, for a nice research district. Right now, I would like to uh, focus a bit on manufacturing. So this is why we're starting with that in the queue right away so far so good in here nothing else that we need to do right now next up i would like to zoom out a bit uh, of my capital to have a look at the greater area and as we can see whew, 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 might be tricky here we are at the edge of 
this map. That means that, um, yeah, we do have um, only, yeah, only three ways of expansion, not four, unfortunately. Um, so this is already limited, limiting us. And as you can see, we are only part of a smaller star cluster because the further we zoom out, the more we can see that we are part of a galaxy and that we can actually then also go ahead and explore the rest of the galaxy as well that also has dozens of star clusters. But right now we are in here and we need to get started with finding us more planets that we can settle on and resources, the best in case. Let's just have a look at Probe. Um, we are going to send them out there to the different um, star systems that we have then here around here. So there is one. Um, that's a Probe. Then I do have a Surveyor ship that we should have over there. This one here can survey the breeze that we find, like this one here, an artifact. Um, that's a part. That's for a for a flagship then to to scan as well. Um, and then we have oh, a colony ship that we can use then to create a new colony. Um, we also have a, a shipyard, well, the shipyard and in the shipyard I can start with uh, yeah constructing more ships. And I, I really love that all of these civilizations have their own ship types. In this case here, that's one of these. And yeah, I would like to get a new probe out there. Will take me six turns because we do need to we do need to get more exploration done. There's another artifact then looking over there, and there is my probe then as well. Perfect. So this is all now running. That's the next step. Next step is research. We don't have any research yet, so I would like to get started with that as well. We do have two options available for the beginning. That's the Galactic Expansion Protocol, and this unlocks the Civilization screen and allows us to assign policies. And the other one just gives me a basic movement improvement. So you might guess what actually is the important one here. And of course, it's the Galactic Expansion Protocol. So let's go ahead and start the researching on this. It only takes me one month, that is one turn. The colony ship, I'm not going to keep idle here, so we are going to actually move this also a bit further down to the south, where we do have that access to a lot of these systems there, because of course once we find one, we should quickly settle on that before one of my other civilization competitors is doing that. Oh, there's actually also something interesting here. Durantium, that's actually a rare resource. So one of these asteroid belts has nice Durantium on board. What I can see is that my own solar system or star system actually has also two more planets over there, Mir and Diesel. And both of them actually are settable, right? So you can settle on these. Um, it's a class 3 one and it's a class 3 one here as well. Basically, that just decides how big those planets are. Class 3 is very small. And we can also see the output. Uh, it's only two manufacturing and one research, for example. Whereas my main planet, a class 35 planet, is giving me 7.4 manufacturing already. So, yeah, the bigger the planet, of course, the more output we can get out of that. And we can then use them here as colonies for my main planet. Or we can make them independent um independent planets and with that we can then also manage them but that's something for later let's just end the turn for now and with that we also uh, enact the expansion protocol right away we can go ahead with a new research then this is interesting so we have the um the asteroid mining available to us or the research district i remember last time that i did this the asteroid mining was really far away and I'm really glad this time that we have it right away. And of course, we're going to research that because that gives me a nice manufacturing output. With this one, we can finally then harvest these asteroids that we have, these asteroid belts here that we have around us. That's going to be just glorious. Now, we have unlocked the, um, the policy, so we can now assign ministers to my area. And as I can see, we have three positions available for the beginning, and that is the Minister of Exploration, Technology, and Colonization. And we want to we want to assign someone to that because then we get bonuses out of that. We only have one unassigned leader right now. That's 4456 here right now. And he's not very loyal to us. Uh, right now that doesn't play that much, the matter matters that much, but later on they could um yeah revolt against us quickly. And what I can see is he's not that bad with technology or with a diligence, so that is exploration. Let's assign someone new, or let's recruit some new ones. We have 1,500 credits, and recruiting a new leader costs me some credits. And in this case here, oh, there's one with very high diligence. Um, that is actually not that bad, right? So the higher it is, of course, the better it is, but we do have one. I should not keep him idle. We have one for researching. Uh, we do need researching and we do need colonization. So actually both of them are very good. 
let's go ahead and get both of them and then we can assign them right and he is just perfect for exploration so with that we get another move point for every ship that we have um and we also get a plus 12 ship range um, depending on the size of our planet or the distance of our planets next up we do get probably um this one here for the colonization but this one gives me a plus seven approval rating for all my colonies and then we have also this one here for the research now we could also go vice versa with those guys here and i think i think that's the better option honestly because with that um we don't profit that much from from a higher point right it, it just increases the ship range a bit which is not super important right now but getting the more research output is better for me right now so we get a plus one of random tax and a plus nine percent research speed on top of everything that's pretty nifty and let's go ahead and assign those fellows to my to my positions to next up yeah it doesn't end there yet so we have more special decisions to do and that is one of my policies so we can go with a one for now um this is also my policy um overview right my civilization overview and here we could also assign taxes to my civilization so right now we're at medium taxes this gives me a boost of 5.42 credits per turn. Um, if I go higher, I reduce approval rating. If I go lower, I increase approval rating. And the higher the approval rating, basically, the less likely it is for colonies to revolt, um, the more productive they are. So let's keep it at medium for now, because I still would like to get some credits there per turn. And the other one is then a policy that we can assign. So we could go for extreme automation. At the loss of income, we could get more manufacturing out. Uh, these numbers are not that important right now because we don't have that manufacturing at the moment, right? So gross income is a plus five, but pollution is also increasing and remote piloting is a plus one. Um, I think in this case here, I'm going with the heart of the empire because we are getting the um, influence growth and gross income boost. Um, there's no penalty to this one. Um, this one has, actually has penalty um, and I would like to go ahead and increase my influence there as well. Influence is basically that sphere that we have around us and the more we get into that, the better and also the, the stronger our borders are. All right, turn two was quite busy, I should say. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start the exploration of this artifact over there. Right, so my, my ship is now doing this. And we'll just get probably a bonus out of that, hopefully. Let's end the turn. My ships continue to move. Oh, yep. Yeah. There is a new system. So my probe is getting closer to that now. Uh, class 0, that planets, that's not great. Right, nothing we can really do about that. And also we have finished the capital city. So we now grow again. I mean, in this case here, growing means manufacturing robots, right? There is there is no um, organic growth here that we have at the moment. So I can't do that. Um, and then we have here the capital city and then the, yeah. Probably going with another manufacturing then right away as well. We want to boost that as much as possible. We can go for an executive order. So these are special orders that we can do um, once in a while. And one of them is the manufacturer population order. And this one here, without the using the ransom, so the ransom we need for uh, actually building us new robots, we can recycle scraps to quickly produce more citizens. And this costs me 100 um, and also some control, but we do have plenty of that. And yeah, it's a cooldown of 10 turns then as well. And with that, we should be getting a new um, population out, right? We got six out of nine. Who did we actually get here now? Another citizen. All right. That's okay. We can train him as a worker. Um, and with this, we could get more manufacturing. And I think that's what I would like to do for him. And with that, we have a manufacturing output of 9.4 now. So already boosted by two. And this will then also speed up the ship production that we have because they are assigned to the planets there. They're affected by that. Uh, our civilization should admire culture, so we have some advisors here. They're standing, uh, economy is robust and growing, uh, right? And military stands ready. I don't have a military? If I have a military, I don't see it. <laughs> we don't have any ships. Um, perhaps one of my smaller ones. Yeah, my surveyor can actually fight a bit, but that's about it. There is a class one poor planet, a volcanic planet. Uh, very, very unlikely that we are going to settle on this. It's also super close to this here. Uh, what I can see is that we have found all the planets of the system because we can see this on the orbit lines here. So we probably should look for something else over here. 
inspired. This is my next one. At the cusp of a computational renaissance, the Yaw Collective orchestrates its next grand phase of synthetic evolution. Networks humming with the electric wisdom of untold aeons, they prepare to assimilate revolutionary technologies into their very framework. Each node, a nexus of potential, echoes with the binary promise of expansion. Poised to extend their consciousness across the galactic expanse, the Yaw forego flesh-bound limitations, their collective intellect converging on a singular, indomitable purpose to engrave the logic of their existence deep into the fabric of the cosmos itself. They now have a decision to make. This is one of the new um, additions that we got with the latest update. And yeah, this gives me a story to follow along, my, my civilization basically. Each civilization has its own story, and that's the your singularity. And we need to yeah decide where we want to go with our civilization. Construct a neural nexus complex, uh, deploy quantum processors, or establish autonomous fabricators. So we could go with several playthroughs and always go a different route. Um, in this case here, uh, let's construct a neural nexus complex. I like the idea of this. Quantum computers, I mean, yeah, that's super nice. Um, and establish autonomous fabricators would be also something. But there's something about the neural nexus complexes that we, we uh, build to enhance collective intelligence and decision-making processes that sounds very logical to me for, a, for an AI um, civilization. Let's go ahead with that. And we will see then those nexuses. And they're increasing my intelligence rating. And with that, my research output. And that's quite significant. Holy cow. And yeah, we got a few of them now. And they also boost the research output of every adjacent district. So for example, here, we will probably be able to make an, a, a research hub out of this whole thing. There's also the Ancient Wonders that also gives me a plus three research. So holy cow, there will be quite the output here um, for some research. Very nice indeed. Born on the planet. All right, uh, planet report. How should we best prepare them for their future? So there is a new generation of of Yor now living in Econia. So that's probably the latest uh, Yor that I've constructed. And we can now go ahead and how should we assign them? So military needs new recruits, brilliant thinkers, or uh, dreams. Uh, we need artists. Now, it's a dangerous world out there. I actually would like to go for um, the soldier citizen here because... We already boost our research quite a bit now, right? And I don't I don't think I need to go further down this route for the moment. Um so let's get us a soldier out. And that's the fellow here. Oh, he's looking he's looking a bit dangerous there too. And he is yeah, he's going to fight for us. We can assign him to a ship then as well, that I can not build yet. Alright, probe in two. Uh and that's probably it. I'm probably going to go with another probe after this. So let's queue it up. And I think also we are finished for this turn already. Asteroid mining. Oh, this is great. Uh, we can go ahead with a new one. Here we can now, f f uh, well, invent weapons for ships. Uh, Starbase modules and planetary substrates. Right, devices to increase planet classes. That doesn't sound so bad as well. Let's actually go though for the um, exploration probes with weaponry. And this one gets me into the military tactic as well. Uh, it's all for self-defense, of course. Of course. And then, thanks to the attack, we have now Asteroid Miners. There it is. And yeah, we can use them. I wonder... No, we cannot use them for Durantium. This one needs a star base for us to harvest. But we can use these Asteroid Belts. So let's go in. There it goes. Would you like to build a mining base? I would. And now we do have these little clusters and this little, these little miners here and probes. And they're now mining that asteroid belt. And that is now, as we can see, supplying our main planet. And this one gives me a 0.1 production yield per field. And this is boosting our manufacturing output then to 10. Or 9.9 it is, actually 10 it is now. We have a second one. And that's a two-field asteroid belt. A two-field asteroid belt. So it doesn't really matter. Let's go for the one that's closer. To further boost the output now to 10.1. Perfect. All right. There we have a bit of a manufacturing boost, and we can use this in every um, star system, basically. All right, my colony ship out there. Yeah, we shouldn't risk it too much, right? I don't want to lose it at all. And we can also go ahead in here. Look at this one. That's that one, but it would have a lot of asteroids that we could harvest. But unfortunately, that's it. Let's move on to the next. 
star system. We still have a few. I hope one of these at least has one habitable planet. All right. The cooldown is still running for the robots. Um, there's not that much else we could do, I think. The game tells me I could settle on these planets, but I'm not doing this. They're very, way too small. Um, I would really like to get a an independent colony out there as quickly as possible. Let's end the turn. Weaponized probes. And this one unlocks me now lasers and also uh, hypersonic missiles and the star cannons, right? So uh, weaponry systems for ships. And then we could go into space weapons to use them in combat. Artificial and gravity. <laughs> uh, let's go for the space weapons once more. And as we can see, we're now also increasing here that sphere of influence, right? So it has grown a bit over here as well. So that's the important thing as well. Two more months for the space weapons. That's nothing really that I need to worry about. We got a new probe. Hooray, that's important. And let's, of course, send it over here. All right, so I would like to start the, expa uh, the expansion here, here, and then here as well. So we do need another probe then for sure. How long do you take for this? Two more turns. That must be a one hell of an artifact. If it takes that long to, to survey it. Alright. Uh, do we have two probes now? What is this? I do get another... Oh, this is a fighter. I do have fighters. And there's my probe. We finished constructing the probe. Ah, and we got the fighter out of the tack. That's my mistake. All right, let's hit the probe over here after all. We actually got several new ships now. Oh, and there's a black hole as well. Something we could use then for travel. And I think there is also antimatter over here. That's pretty cool. So these grow around black holes and we can then harvest them with a star base antimatter. So the fighter is actually now exploring. And we do have another fighter that I could use to also speed up the exploration process, right? We don't need fighters or anything else for the moment, so I'm fine with it. This single fighter, we got three. Um, this one here can actually um, probably wait around here somewhere and protect my main base. Those two, actually, it's two fighters. We got four fighters. Incredible. And stand watch here, please. Just in case. Let's end the turn. Yeah, there's my colony ship this one actually also needs to stand by for the moment all right space weapons it is in the grand cosmic scheme our spacecraft delicate as they are could be likened to glass houses in a neighborhood fond of stone throwing and we get the particle beam the ghost cannon and the helios rockets um that we unlock with that further we could delve into the weapon systems now though i would like to also go for planetary substrate so this one um gives me then the housing district and processor upgrades uh, down the road. By the way, I was looking with my manufacturing. We have finished the first manufacturing district. So that's the, the boost that we get out of that. So we are at 10.7 uh, now. Um, then we have the second one here. And I'm probably going with another one right away. You also have still two improvements that we can build. One of them is the sensor range increase. Um, a relic scanner and one of them is a Durantium scanner and this one gives me also a sensor increase It gives me also maintenance increasement and it's a civilization achievement. I, I don't think I need really need it for now So that's just something All right, this is now working still there seems to be something mysterious outpost He claims that he was sent to observe us and that he has peaceful intentions Pause for a moment. All right outpost occupied by a single alien Convert the outpost into a, gal uh, in a colony. This We would get a gain class 5 planet with that. Uh, invite the alien to join our government. We gain a diplomat. Or force the alien to tell us everything he knows. <laughs> uh, this gives me intimidation and research. Let's actually make it a colony. Of course, this is the most important one. Ah, over here it is. All right. And that's a... What? A volcanic planet. We have a volcanic planet. And... Usually you can only settle them when you have the, the right tech for it, right? A class 8 one, not so bad. Absolutely not so bad. The alien that lives there is also extremely fond of us. 99 approval rating. 
not so bad, right? And this one is now contributing, as we can see, also to my main column here, boosting its output to 12.9 manufacturing and 16.4 uh, research. Also a bit of wealth, right? Yeah, 12 in addition. So we are boosting also our income with that. So far so good. We got actually a colony for free. I like this. I hope you like this one too. Galactic Civilizations 4. And we continue onwards in the next episode of this sponsored video. If you're interested in Galactic Civilization 4, please don't forget to check out the link in the video description. Stay tuned.